Hello friends, welcome to another session of gastrointestinal physiology. In this we will see about the motor functions of the intestine. That means which are the various types of movements of the intestine, small intestine, large intestine and then we will see in about the defecation reflex. Now, which are the movements of the small intestine? As, as with the other uh, intestinal movements, it can be divided into the mixing movements and the propulsive movement. Which are the mixing movements? which I will call as the segmental contraction moments. What are the segmental contraction? The segment of the intestine, as you can see in this figure. Suppose, this is the segment, this is the segment which has contracted. This contraction will, will remain for some time. And now after some time, what will happen? This segments will relax and this were the one they will contract. So now this, so these are called as segmental contractions. These are very effective in causing the mixing. That is the mixing of the juices with the food. Then we have got is the propulsive movement. Normally the propulsive movements are weak peristaltic movement that is present in the intestine. They should be weak because the sufficient amount of the digestion and the absorption that should be taking place. But sometimes that can be if especially if the intestine is irritated with some toxins. In that case the peristalsis can become very fast, rapid and then the person will have the diarrhea in that related to that. Right? Then intestinal motility is enhanced by certain factors such as the gastroenteric reflex. Now what do you mean by gastroenteric reflex? Whenever the food will enter into the stomach, the stomach will send signal to the enteron that is the intestine to increase its motility so that the more space can be created for the food. This is called as the gastroenteric reflex. Gastrin which is the hormone released by the stomach. CCK. Then insulin, motilin, serotonin. All these are the ones which are going to enhance the motility of the intestine. Whereas secretin and glucagon that will inhibit the small intestinal motility. You have to remember that secretin is most synthesized if the uh, this is exposed to the acidic chyme. If the duodenum and the upper small intestine is exposed to the acidic chyme. Now, once the sufficient amount of the digestion and absorption has taken place and the chyme is moved up till the end of the ileum. Now, at the end of the ileum, what lies is the ileocecal wall. If you remember the anatomy of the ileocecal wall, this is the wall which is protruded in the cecum and that will act as a good effective ileocecal wall. So, as what is the function of that? Most of the chyme will reach to the up till the ileocecal wall and it will there in, into the la, last part of the ileum that will there. It can remain there up till the person eats the next food. So then uh, another reflex that will be set up which, are, which, can, which can we call it as a gastroileal reflex. So the gastroileal reflex will cause further emptying of the ileum and of chyme it can move from the ileocecal wall into the cecum and then into the intestine. Right, the ascending colon, transverse colon, then it will be able to move that. The major function of the ileocecal wall, if you look at its anatomy and if you look at the sphincter action, that is to prevent the backward flow. It will prevent the prevents backflow of the chyme from the large intestine into the small intestine or the ileum. The this ileocecal wall can be very effective if at all there is a contraction of the cecum or if at all there is contraction of the large intestine. What is what will happen? The anatomical location functional wall is such that the wall will be closed and the chyme will go pass only in the forward direction in the colon and it will not the it will not move back into the small intestine. Sometimes if in especially in case of the appendicitis, if the person is having appendicitis, the reflex can be from the cecum can be so strong that it will almost close the ileocecal wall so that there is no emptying of the ileum content into the intestine so that that will be helpful to, so that the appendix the inflamed appendix in that case that will be there now when it comes to the movements of the large intestine what are the movements of the large intestine we can divide the large intestine into the proximal half and the distal half the proximal half is concerned with more whatever the chyme is there it's almost having the fluid quality so large amount of the fluid and the electrolytes has to be absorbed back now so this absorption is mainly taken taking place in the proximal part of the colon. So the moments in that will be according to that. The type of the moments, the mixing moments, these are called as hostrations. What are hostrations actually? 
a circular muscle fiber about 2.5 cm long circular muscle fiber it will it is going to contract along with the tenia colia that is a longitudinal muscle fibers so if a circular muscle fiber a part of the circular muscle this is being contracted in intestine and along with the tenia colia whatever the remaining undistended part that will bulge out these are called as hostrations these are called as hostrations remember hostrations are very very important to cause absorption of the water mainly fluid part so these are very hostrations right next we have got is the propulsive movement of the intestine these are called as the mass movement now what is this mass movement it is mainly very important that what are the fecal matter which has been developed now to cause movement of the fecal matter into the forward direction how does this happens whenever there is a cust whenever there is a distension of the intestinal wall the constrictor ring will be developing proximal to it similar to that of the peristalsis and now the distal 20 cm part it will contract together so if it contracts together what will happen now whatever the matter fecal matter it will be push forward in a moment this is called as the mass moment that is taking place right generally this moments are more enhanced by the gastrocolic or duodenocolic reflex now what do you mean by gastrocolic reflex this you might have observed that the generally the children once they after they eat the food they go for the defecation so it is because of the gastrocolic reflex again what the gastrocolic reflex will do that whenever this there is entry of the food into the stomach it is going to cause movement of the intestine uh, fasten up the movement of the intestine and because of large intestine and because of that the fecal matter can be pushed forward and ultimately if it goes up to the rectum it can generate the defecation reflex right so the gastrocolic reflex duodenocolic reflex similarly if there is a chyme in the duodenum it is going to enhance the motility of the large intestine so these are the one which are going to enhance the mass movement and causes the forward movement of the now what exactly and whatever the fecal matter generally it is stored in the latter part of the large intestine so the mainly the storage is the function of the latter part of the large intestine whereas the proximal part of the large intestine what is its function to cause absorption of the water now the fecal matters are generally stored in the latter part half of the transverse colon and the descending colon they generally don't for up till the sigmoid colon the fecal matter can be reach but from the sigmoid colon the fecal matter does not enter the enter into the rectum rectum is kept empty now why the rectum is kept empty if you analyze the anatomy now there is a angulation from the sigmoid colon when the rectum is formed there is a angulation because of that and this angulation is very important to keep the rectum empty not only that but there is a weak sphincter like action we can call it as a sigmoid or rectal wall so which because of that also the rectum is kept empty but if there is a excess of fecal matter or if there is a movement of the large intestine it is being enhanced in that case what will happen some fecal matter will enter inside the rectum and now there is a distension of the rectum this distension of the rectum is very very important to generate what is called as the defecation reflex now what are the defecation reflex what are the changes that will happen as soon as there is a distension of the rectum the impulses are sent to the spinal cord okay the sacral part of the mainly the spinal cord here not only that but the there is a myentric reflex that is also being generated now some anatomical part related to that there is a internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter where is the internal anal sphincter that is the thicken muscle fibers thick muscle fibers just inside the anus so the thicken muscle fibers that will be there they will act as a sphincter that will cause an internal anal sphincter it is not under the voluntary control whereas the external anal sphincter which is formed by the skeletal muscle as such uh, which is under the voluntary control and it is supplied by the pudendal nerve right so ultimately what will happen if that all the some fe some fecal matter will go inside the rectum three reflexes will be generated which are those three reflexes local myentric reflex once some amount of the fecal matter is there into the rectum it will send the impulses to the transverse colon it will send the impulses to the descending colon and now there will be constriction strong peristaltic constriction the mass movement that will be generated because of that more fecal matter that can will enter into the rectum and ultimately internal anal sphincter will relax 
and if the external environment sphincter is also relaxed at the time the defecation can take place next this basic reflex is again supported by the parasympathetic reflex now the impulses will go to the sacral part and from to the pelvic nerves the parasympathetic outflow will be there and again it is going to cause more mass movement of the large intestine and again it is going to cause the emptying of the large intestine and the defecation reflex that can be facilitated at the same time through internal pudendal nerve the external anal sphincter that should be relaxed not only that but there is another reflex whenever the impulses go to the spinal cord one more reflex that is generated is that the person will take deep breath inside then the vocal cords will be closed up and now the person will try to the diaphragm will be contracted and the abdominal pressure will be increased the person will try to expire against the closed glottis so that the pressure inside the diaphragm that can be increased the expiratory muscles of the diaphragm expiratory muscles of the abdomen forceful that will also contract the aim is to increase the abdominal pressure so that the defecation reflex that can be supported right so the basic defecation reflex is because of the local mitotic reflex and the parasympathetic reflex supported by the abdominal compression reflex which is there one has to remember that the persons who are habituated or they will suppress this basic reflexes they are more tend to go for the constipation as such right so with this we come to the end of this lecture thank you